Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. The 10th chapter of Mark describes Jesus' final journey to the city of Jerusalem and gives us details of conversations he had with his disciples as he walked those faithful steps. Mark 10, 32, And they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went before them, and they were amazed, and as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto them, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the Gentiles. There's no doubt that Jesus knew what was going to happen, the full, terrible range of it all, the all-night legal proceedings beginning with a mockery, rather, of a trial before the high priest, the ordeal before Pilate, and then Herod, and then back again to Pilate, at last a dreadful sentence, and the Lord of the universe being torn, turned over to the soldiers for their cruel amusements. He foreknew the nails, the rough wooden cross, the excruciating agony, and the final gasps. This picture in Mark is given us to provide a window into his courage as a man. For he faced these things in his flesh just as any man would. Just as in everything else he did, our Lord showed himself the ideal example of what we should be. So much is in that one little phrase, Jesus went before them. The little band was walking the Jerusalem road, but this picture shows the Lord with head held high, firm resolve, strong commitment showing in every line of his features, not a mark of dread or drawing back appearing about him anywhere. The Bible teaches us to bless them which persecute us, to bless and curse not. People who don't have a soul-converting Christian experience can easily feel that it is weakness, and in one way it is, for the weakness of the gospel is love. As someone has said, I'd rather be wrong and strong than to be weak and meek. And indeed, indeed it is the attitude generally of the world, but it was not the attitude of Jesus Christ. Gentle and kind he was, patient with sinners, merciful to those bearing life's various afflictions, compassionate to those who came to him, even when they did so for the wrong reasons, even when they did so showing little faith and having wrong expectations. But lacking in courage he was not, and here among others are scriptures that prove it. On this final journey, Jesus, with sure, steady steps, took the lead and marched to meet the destiny that brought our salvation as bravely as ever warrior has done. Christ was not only gracious, he was a man with an heroic iron will. Nobody who doesn't have just that same kind of iron will can accomplish very much in life. To be weak is to be miserable. Weak people try to evade the pain that life must bring, both emotionally and physically, not understanding that letting our knees buckle and our courage run out our fingertips when we are forced to face adversity and suffering really only makes pain worse. Courage and determination are necessary components for bringing any difficult task to completion, whether it's building skyscrapers or teaching children to be adults. Cowards have concocted many a sophisticated explanation why, when the building catches on fire, they have to go make sure their shoes are neatly polished, can't be expected to risk scorching their clothing by putting it out. None of these excuses are good enough. When a person knows in his own heart he wasn't willing to stand and face life like, life like a sure enough grown-up human being, he's going to carry self-doubt and shame. Jesus Christ is the model of resolve that nothing can bend. His life teaches us to resist and persist, no matter what stands between us and our goal. Thankfully, his life also teaches us when we fail that there is a way back, that cowards by grace can become heroes and sometimes do. But maybe the greatest part of his heroic manhood is that he showed it without surrendering on any of his gentleness. It isn't necessary to be harsh, hard, or unfeeling to be brave. The great secret of Christian bravery is Christ infuses his courage into us. You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.